ahead and get started. Um, let me start by saying how excited we are to um, be here with so many of you today uh, to be talking about a really exciting topic and offering what we hope to be the first of several small but important webinars based on things that we hear um, from all of you. And so today we're going to focus on achieving mastery, understanding status, and its relation to the eighth blessing. I'm Kelly, and I'm joined by my um, fantastic colleagues, Tim and Shalisa. Before we go ahead and get into content, let's talk quickly about um, how you can make the most out of this uh, webinar experience. For the sake of everyone's benefit, you're all in a listen-only mode. Um, we're muting you if you haven't muted yourself. But we really want to encourage everyone to participate as much as possible. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Um, one way is to one way is to um, use the question box located in the organizer um, bar. And so that's that little box right here. They can see where my mouse is. And that's going to allow you to ask questions um, to the moderators. So you're saying, Kim, they're going to answer your questions as they come in. Um, because of the volume of people that we have attending, um, they'll try to get to the questions as soon as possible. Um, and then if anybody has questions that are sort of more complex than others or that might require us to look into things a little bit more closely, we will certainly take all of your um, details and then look into it and get back to you um, as soon as we can. There's also going to be a dedicated time um, towards the end of the webinar for questions specifically. So um, certainly if you have a question that you don't want to wait to ask because it's relevant to what we're talking about at the moment, feel free. Um, otherwise, um, uh, we'll have a lot of time um, towards the end of the webinar to um, get those addressed. A couple of other things that you can do um, with this is you can use the raise your hand feature, which is that little palm. Uh, we're going to ask you to do that to sort of um, gain some understanding um, and, and look at how you guys are, are responding to the content. Um, but you can also do that to flag somebody's attention. And then we have a couple of interactive polls that we'll ask you to, to answer just to, again, gain um, how much um, you're getting what we're talking about. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Relatedly, the objectives are today are for all of you to gain a better understanding of how the ACE assigns mastery status, how you can set up your learner's objectives to optimally mirror your classroom goals and more closely monitor status, and finally, how to modify lesson parameters to better reflect mastery status and sort of troubleshoot if things aren't going exactly the way um, that you think they should be. So the ACE assigns um, status of each sublevel for an essay lesson, context for an IT lesson, or change for a task analysis lesson automatically. And these options are in progress, whereby data collection has started, um, but the specific criteria for mastery have not yet been uh, obtained. Once it's uh, mastered, it's going to continue to be maintained um, until criteria for reteaching specifically are reached. I'm just going to take a minute to check my audio because we can hear a little feedback on our end, and we want to make sure that um, you don't hear that feedback or that you have the best audio experience. So we're just going to pause for one second and switch our audio. So bear with me for one moment. How is that? All right, everyone, I switched my audio controls and we're going to see if that's any better. All right, I think we're getting some indication that that's better on your end. If anybody has additional feedback, please feel free to um, let us know and we'll try to troubleshoot again. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, sounds like we're we're moving better. You haven't missed much um, so far, and thankfully everything we're, we said in the first slide I'm going to reiterate quite a few times. So 
um, we'll just keep moving along. Another way to sort of look at that, um, the different types of status and how it flows is to look at it in this kind of a format where it's sort of flowing, whereby data collection starts uh, and, and skills start in progress, and then they move to mastered in that instant where all of that criteria are met. We're going to talk a lot about those specific criteria um, later on. Again, skills continue to be maintained until that criteria for reteaching is met. And at that point, you're sort of trying to get back to the point of mastery and then going into maintained again. And this is a nice way of looking at it, how we're constantly trying to get our skills back to the point of being mastered and maintained. So again, we're going to focus going forward on that specific criteria to get to mastery, because that's what a lot of us are looking for. That's probably why a lot of you joined this webinar, because um, sometimes it can seem a little bit elusive. So we'll talk a lot about these specific parameters um, and how to set them up and where to, um, how to monitor them. Before we get there, there's really two pieces of lesson customization that most directly impact the mastery status. And the majority of the objective container really sets you up to customize those criteria for mastery. We're going to talk a lot about that and start there. And then we'll talk about the parameters and the maintenance container that are also going to have an impact on status. So hopefully this looks pretty familiar to some of you. We have the objective container on the right hand side. This is most often customized to meet your learner and um, site specific needs during activation of a lesson, but it can be edited at any time to make any adjustments. Again, we're going to talk about conditions under which you might want to do that um, here, and you might find some tips and some ways to sort of um, make some of those types of changes. So let's look at the specific mastery criteria and where they align in the objective. Accuracy refers to the percent accuracy specified in the container. Time period refers to the specified number of consecutive weeks or sessions. And finally, the generalization parameter refers to the number of people and or settings that are specified. And interestingly, these are the two parameters that you can actually select to have NA and not count towards the mastery criteria. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. Another way to sort of look at how these parameters interplay with each other um, is what you can see here. And each time you save a row of data, the ACE is going to compare the current trial or session that you've entered to these mastery criteria. And again, constantly be looking for your learner to push that skill into um, being mastered and then um, maintained. And what I have at the bottom is that nice sort of clean mastery criteria that you can find in the criteria container. So you're setting all of it up in the objective container, and it's going to cascade down to this nice sort of concrete um, mastery criteria that you can easily use to reference. And going forward, we'll talk about really referencing that um, if you're trying to check on status and where things are or if things aren't looking the way um, you think they should. Importantly, there's several factors that are not affected by mastery, but which we commonly get um, asked about. This includes, for example, lesson alerts. Lesson alerts are an optional feature that you can turn on where the ACE will automatically move a learner through prompt progressions, um, as well as indicate to the users if a lesson needs attention. And mastery status is going to be assigned regardless of whether you take advantage of that feature or not. Trial types will not affect mastery status. So for example, even if you're running a baseline session, but it otherwise meets the criteria for uh, mastery, that skill can be mastered immediately. Of course, in, under those conditions, you would have had uh, the criteria be one session, one um, person, et cetera. And really, in real life, that sort of makes sense. If a learner uh, does so well, even in one baseline session, you don't want to waste your or the learner's instructional time teaching it, because they've obviously got the skill um, at strength already. Similarly, prompt feeding step does not matter for mastery. Um, there are several prompt feeding options that are going to allow for independent performance um, early on, for example, in time delay prompts. And all that it's really looking for in terms of the um, accuracy is the accuracy and independence. And finally, the learner objective and any parameters that you have specified in there are also not going to affect mastery status. Rather, status is going to be assigned based on the parameters outlined in the ACE lesson objective. Let's talk more about that one because it's a pretty common um, thing that we hear at the help desk. So the learner objective was really designed 
to be for display purposes only on reports and other areas that you can view um, objective statements. The ACE, however, cannot read the values in this field to apply them um, towards mastery status. So this is really best used under conditions in which you have slightly different wording that you want to be displayed again in reports or other viewable sections, but you know um, that you're really looking at the eighth objective for the mastery criteria and you're trying to match those as closely as possible and or knowing that you're relying on the eighth lesson objective for um, mastery status. Let's take a look at a real life example of when you might do this. So let's say I have a learner, for example, um, and I'm trying to match up an ACE objective to a certain IEP. So to a certain IEP goal, excuse me. And I've found this objective in the ACE, and it's a pretty good fit, but there's slightly different wording that I specifically want on my IEP. For example, this learner is going to be working on this skill um, with worksheets, and that's a parent concern. And so I want it to be conveyed that it is going to be worksheets that we're using um, on my reports and some other viewable areas. I can use my uh, learner objective here to go ahead and change some of the wording of that objective to emphasize, for example, that I'm going to be using or that the learner is going to be using um, worksheets for this skill. Now, another important thing that I'm going to need to do here is that in my learner objective, I've specified two people and two settings for my generalization requirement. And even though the eighth objective um, by default was only one setting, I'm going to want to go ahead and make that change in the eighth lesson objective in order for mastery status to accurately reflect what I wanted generalization to be. So even though I had it in my learner objective, it needs to be in my lesson objective to have status really um, map onto what I wanted. There's several other additional considerations uh, that I want to talk about too with regards to mastery. One um, is with regards to generalization, um, those generalization parameters. The number of people and settings must be less than or equal to the number of consecutive sessions in order for status to be assigned correctly. So let's say, for example, I have a learner who tends to have difficulty uh, when we're looking at skills with novel staff. And for that reason, I've required um, that the skill be demonstrated across four people. That's kind of conservative given that the common default is two. But again, I have a student-specific reason that I want it to be more stringent. Well, this um, mastery or objective reads across four people in two settings, a learner will identify safety signs with 89% accuracy for three consecutive sessions. Because I have a mismatch and I'm only requiring three consecutive sessions, there's no way for me to meet my generalization requirement of four people, and therefore mastery will not be assigned. There's a couple of really easy ways to fix this. One would be to change my uh, generalization requirement to three people or two people. But I had a really specific reason that I wanted four. So I'm going to keep that and instead change my consecutive session requirement to four. Also super easy. It's going to change it in the objective container. Let's look at another consideration. Actually, let's practice what we just did. So this is going to be our first time interacting. We're going to take a vote. Hopefully this goes well. Um, I'm sure all of you are going to be really good at it. So we're going to look at two examples. Um, and based on the same example that I just gave you with regards to the generalization requirements and the consecutive sessions, I want you to raise your hand if you think that objective A is going to be okay with regards to assigning mastery status. So again, you're reading that objective based on the example we just did. Raise your hand if you think that the um, mastery status is going to be assigned okay in this um, instance. I'll give people another minute to answer. Find your palm. All right, nice work. Looks like you guys got the message. Um, this objective should be fine the way it's written with regard specifically to the generalization parameters and the required consecutive sessions. It's equal to in this case. Um, so there should be no concerns there. Let's look at another example. Same thing, raise your hand if you think the way the generalization requirements 
and the consecutive sessions are written will be okay in assigning status. Good, good. I'm seeing almost resounding silence. Um, maybe some of you are withholding, which is totally fine. Um, but I think what we have is that everybody is in um, agreement that this is going to be an issue in this case. B is going to have an issue because, again, we have um, two people requirements and one consecutive session. I will say with some amount of made up accuracy um, that this is a very, very common help desk question. We get this quite a bit. Um, I think sometimes we forget the parameters that we originally set the lesson up with or we kept the defaults um, for convenience and simply forget. And we really meant it to be across the different amount of people or settings um, or consecutive sessions. And this is a common issue in terms of um, the lesson not meeting mastery status when the learner is performing as well as they possibly can. So definitely um, seems easy, but it's a common, uh, common mistake. Nice work, good job participating. Hopefully you had fun with that. All right, let's look at another consideration. This is with regards to incidental teaching lessons um, specifically. For some incidental uh, teaching lessons, the contexts have settings embedded in them, built in. So in this example, on the left-hand side, I have my instructional um, plan, and the contexts are classroom, hallway, et cetera. So generalization with regards to settings is built in there. In these cases, you have the option, as I mentioned earlier, to select NA for settings um, so that there's not that additional requirement that doesn't make a lot of sense um, embedded in the objective statement um, when, again, generalization with regards to settings is being built in inherently. And so what you can see on the right is an example of indicating NA during the setup, and it just takes that parameter out of the lesson objective. Another consideration is with regards to your percent accuracy and data block selection. What you want to think about here is really what the lesson is going to look like trial by trial or in your session. Um, so for example, if your objective is calling for 90% correct independent, but you're teaching in sets of three stimuli for nine trials, one error would be 89%. So you're not really going to allow for even one error. And in that case, you might as well set it at 100%. Um, accuracy required and maybe that's what you intended if not and you want to let the um, learner have at least one error and still be able to sort of pass go um, then you might want to change it to something that sort of mathematically um, and in terms of what your teaching session really looks like makes sense another consideration is with regards to session versus opportunity Essay lessons specifically offer a choice in how the data are collected and analyzed, again, between sessions and opportunities. Sessions are designed for um, cases where data is going to be collected in multiple trials, usually in one sitting. And importantly, mastery is evaluated by looking at performance across the specified number of consecutive sessions. Opportunities is there to sort of allow a little bit more flexibility. So under conditions where maybe um, trials might be more spaced out over time or might vary in frequency. So you might run one trial here, a couple trials the next time that there's a, a chance to do it. And importantly, in these cases, mastery is going to be evaluated by looking at learner performance across a specified number of weeks rather than sessions. This is also can be really tricky um, because we have all of this in mind when we're setting up the lesson initially. And then if you get to the point of analyzing your data and you don't remember, um, these sort of implications, then it can be hard to keep track of. All right, so let's talk, we, we talked a lot about the objective container and what sort of um, parameters are going to have a big influence on your mastery status. Let's talk about the maintenance container and what values in there are similarly going to have a, um, an impact on status. What you want to pay attention to in the maintenance container is your criteria for reteaching. So I mentioned several times that the ACE is automatically going to change the status to reteaching when these criteria are met um, for something that's been mastered up until now. This is where that criteria lives. And so you want to make sure your criteria makes sense and is what you actually want it to be. 
So in this case, if we look, for example, at the bottom of this maintenance container, in this case, I'm setting up the criteria to reteach to be an, um, performance below 89% for two out of three consecutive sessions. This probably makes sense depending on the lesson and depending on the learner. If you had something more um, stringent, like one session of 89% or below, but it's in maintenance, so it doesn't get run very frequently, then what you're sort of saying is that if they have one bad day, you know, out of this whole week that you've decided to run maintenance, or even one bad hour, um, you know, you might really quickly meet criteria for reteaching. Um, and so again, you want to think about your learner and what you want to do in terms of, and clinically, in, in terms of your classroom style and what makes the most sense with regards to um, criteria to reteach. Or you might see some sort of yo-yoing back and forth between being mastered and going into reteaching very frequently. All right, so now let's talk about how and where you can view status quickly um, to sort of ongoingly monitor how things are going. You can view the status of an entire sublevel context or chain in the instructional summary report on each lesson landing page. If any of you are having a hard time picturing what the lesson landing page looks like or where that lives, if you select the blue objective number of any active lesson, that takes you right to the lesson landing page and it looks like this. So you, you see your learner up in the corner and you can see the lesson name. You have several parameters to sort of evaluate and to look at. Um, and that instructional summary report lives right at the bottom of this under the lesson results. So just to refresh your memory. So if we look at this um, instructional summary report, for example, and we look specifically at the status column, we can see that sublevel 1.01 took a sort of normal trajectory, it was introduced, mastered, and then it remains maintained. 1.02 is still being worked on. 1.03, though, seems to be going a little bit of that yo-yoing we were just talking about between mastered and reteaching. Um, so clinically, I'm going to want to sort of look at this, go back and look at my maintenance container, double check my criteria for reteaching, make sure it makes sense, and then really look at why is performance changing like that, or is it a function of sort of the parameters that I had set up. Alternatively, you can view the status of each row of session data in the summary data entry page. Again, just to refresh your memory, to go there, you go to the lesson landing page and then select the uh, enter summary data widget. At the bottom of that page, you're going to see this um, summary data entry grid. And you can see, again, session by session, status changes, including that sort of magical moment when things turn um, mastered and continue to be maintained. So I really like to get at that um, session level. Another question that we get asked a lot, which is certainly related to status, but a little bit different, is how to look at progress towards my annual goal. So we talked about how the first four numbers in that lesson objective really determine mastery for a sublevel context or chain. If you want to look how you're doing towards meeting your annual goal, so it's a bigger picture, um, then what we really recommend is that you set up the PTO or progress toward objective goal. Um, and this is going to help you monitor how you're doing towards that bigger picture because it incorporates the frequently included sort of last number in the objective statement, which is the requirement for how many targets or other conditions again, for the annual goal to be met. And so PTO is a great way to set that up and keep looking um, at that bigger picture. In the interest of staying on task for today, I'm not going to go much more into PTO, but we have a ton of wonderful Help Center articles that go over setting up PTO, how to monitor it, how to make sure that it's really reflective of um, what you want it to be, and, and again, how it relates to mastery like we're talking about now. And I actually suspect that we'll be doing a webinar just like this on PTO in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we talked about setting up your lesson and the parameters that really um, contribute to that. We also talked about how to do it and sort of keep track of status on an ongoing basis. Next, I want to talk about some general troubleshooting. So now we're getting into sort of action. How do we remediate when we need to? Or how do we identify the issues 
um, when they're happening. This is what we get um, when, when you often have to reach out to the help desk. Not that we don't want you to reach out to us, but want you to be able to help yourself too. So the first thing I want to show you is um, what I call a mastery status checklist. So if you're in this sort of scenario where mastery is not being met and I think it should be, what should I do? My first um, line of defense is always to check that mastery criteria at the bottom of the criteria container just because it's going to simply say exactly what parameters you set into your um, objective container and what exactly is being required for mastery. Again, sometimes it's just as simple as this and you thought it was um, supposed to be one person and the criteria is actually two. And that is an easy, easy fix that you can make on your own right away without having to reach out to us and, and, um, and, and waste that kind of time. The next thing you want to do is compare the mastery criteria to the data displayed in the past data, data grid, like we just looked at, and again, ensure all the requirements are satisfied. So oftentimes what happens is you're like, yeah, that is exactly the mastery criteria that I intended to have for my lesson. Two people, two settings, 80%. And then you go in and look at the data grid and really there is something missing there. Um, so again, very easy um, issue to resolve. You just got to get another session that meets your parameters or, you know, depending on the, the specific scenario. Um, but it's easy to rectify and easy to spot once you sort of have it in mind to go looking for that. And then finally, you want to double check that criteria for reteaching. Um, if something's not saying maintenance and now it says reteaching and you're not sure why or why is that happening quickly, double check that criteria and make sure that it makes sense um, for your learner and for that particular lesson. Now, if there's a condition under which you want to change the mastery criteria after data collection has started, that's okay. That happens a lot. You might, you know, set up a lesson under certain conditions and then things change or you get more information and now you sort of want to incorporate that for any reason. It's definitely doable. What I want to make sure um, that we communicate is that edits to the criteria for mastery or the criteria for reteaching will be applied to all newly entered session data going forward. It does not make these changes retroactively to uh, data that's already saved. If you want to make changes and have it reflect um, in previous data, so retroactively, it's pretty easy. You just need to navigate back to that same data grid in the summary page. Start with the oldest and go to newest. You're going to edit and save. And you don't have to make any actual edits. You just hit edit and save each line going again, oldest to newest, and it's gonna retroactively incorporate that new changed, um, newly updated criteria um, for either mastery or for reaching. So that's a way to sort of capture something that's happened previously and make up for a change that you've made. Pretty simple. All right, let's put some of these um, tips and strategies that we've just covered into action. Um, we're going to try our hand at some, um, some scenarios and use some polls to see how savvy all of you are so quickly. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Here's example one. So my mastery criteria read 80% of programmed opportunities across two consecutive weeks, across two people, in two settings. Here's a look at my past data grid. Which parameter is not being satisfied? We're going to launch a poll so you can answer. Okay, I'm getting word that some of you can't see the question, and I went fast to the poll because I got really excited. Um, so let's close. We're going to close the poll because we actually have multiple versions of that. So we, we came prepared just in case that would happen. We're going to close the poll and let you look at the example for uh, a little bit longer, and then we'll open the poll back up. So really study it, um, meditate on it, and then we'll open the poll back up.
Okay, hopefully that was enough time that you were able to sort of hunt around. And we're going to open the poll back up. So you can change your answers now and we'd never know. All right, we'll give people another second. All right, an overwhelming majority of you answered correctly, um, which is awesome. So let's just walk through it. It sounds like you guys, for the most part, got it, but I wanna make sure that I point out the details of it. Okay, so in looking at accuracy, oh, we're gonna close the poll. Okay, so in, um, in terms of accuracy, we're there. Two people. I see several initials, so we're good. Settings, also multiple settings, so we're good. So really, all we're left with is that consecutive session issue, right, or consecutive weeks, excuse me. Remember, essay and IT lessons can be set up to be measured across opportunities or sessions. Selecting opportunities is gonna turn the time requirement into consecutive weeks. You can see that over here on the, um, the right. So in this case, the mastery criteria call for two consecutive weeks. If you looked at this and kind of forgot about that for a second, it might be easy to think, well, these look like they would be consecutive sessions or they would be consecutive sessions, right? Um, also, just if you're not a good visual person with calendar skills, which is something that um, I can relate to, then it might be hard to just kind of figure out if those are um, adjacent weeks or that's the same week or um, what might be the case. So the easiest way to sort of conceptualize it is that this is a rolling window going backwards. So you're going to find um, the um, most recent date and count backwards, seven days. That's what you can see in the red here. And then to determine if something was a um, consecutive week, go back another seven. Maybe you can use your highlighters. Um, if this is easy for you and calendar skills is your strength, then you're probably okay. And so what we see here is that these are not consecutive weeks. So that's the issue. Again, you can see where just focusing on what we consider to be so important, you know, at face value, which is how the learner's doing, it would be easy to think, oh my God, why isn't this an XB? Why aren't we at mastery? It seems like we should, and that's what we get a lot on the help desk. Um, nice job, it looks like a, uh, most of you um, figured that out from the example, so that's great. And really the solution here is that you need to collect data that satisfy all the criteria parameters. So make that adjustment. All right, let's try one more example. Again, very commonly something that we see. In this example, my student responded to a prompt quickly and now is speeding through this sublevel. Why isn't it mastered yet? We'll give you plenty of time before we open the poll to check out the mastery criteria and the past session grid. All right, I think you guys are savvy, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the poll. Same thing, what parameter is not being satisfied here? Wait, 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 just a, a hot second for people to get those last minute answers in. People are phoning friends.
All right, again, obviously we're dealing with a savvy crowd. Overwhelming majority of you um, identified the issue. Let's walk through it because I want to mention something that I think contributes to this. And again, uh, if you're like, that's easy, we get a help desk to get about this at least, I would say, daily. So again, once we move past the um, immediate prompt, um, our accuracy skyrockets, independent skyrockets, um, and so no issue there. <clears throat> In this case, we see consecutive sessions, no issue there. Two people, just um, by the skin of your teeth, you have two staff. And so what parameter is not being satisfied? The setting parameter. Why I think this happens so frequently, especially the setting parameter, is that especially if you're taking teach now data, when you get to the final screen, the um, setting is automatically populated to the last setting that you entered. And you're not required to enter anything in there. You can leave it as is and finish your session. And a lot of us are used to doing that. We're going fast, we're teaching, we don't have any spare time. And so people just save the session. And so it ends up looking like you ran multiple sessions in the same setting. Maybe you did, and that's a different kind of issue, right? But in a lot of cases, I suspect that people are just not filling in the correct setting. Um, and so you're losing out on the chance for mastery to be achieved that much quicker. So it's just a teachable moment. Make sure you point out to everybody um, and to yourself, if it's you, um, to really attend to that setting um, parameter and all of these parameters. But with this specific example, make sure it's reflecting what's actually happening on the floor. And hopefully you'll get there. Um, quickly. So our solutions in this case are to edit the mastery criteria and then previous data to match like we um, just discussed. Or you can run one more session to satisfy the requirement. That's my preferred answer. So in this case, we ran one more session at the residence and now it's mastered, which is um, the best case scenario. Now you know for sure that all your criteria were satisfied um, and you can move on. All right. Nice work, everyone. Now, we have time, we have plenty of time, it's perfect timing, um, to answer some of your questions. So, some of you have been submitting really great questions. We're going to take just a moment to sort of confer with ourselves to see which ones we think are relevant enough to the wider audience that we want to bring them to all of you. Um, and this is a great time, if you haven't already, to start submitting some of your questions for us to answer. So let's take just a few minutes for people to be able to write in, and then we'll go over some of these as a group. All right, please continue to um, submit your questions. But I want to go over one really great one that I think definitely might be applicable to a lot of people. So someone asked, how does the data collector know to change uh, to maintenance? The drop down menu, this would be um, in the context of Teach Now, looks like a choice the therapist can make versus the goal um, being, it being inherent in the goal. So in Teach Now, when a sublevel has a status of mastered or maintained, the trial type dropdown will automatically default to maintenance. So that's a way to sort of that's the way to sort of sync up the mastery status 
with what we're trying to kind of um, encourage the data collector to do. So like, this is gonna be a clue that if, it, if the um, child type changes to maintenance, that's gonna be a clue to the data collector that in fact, mastery status has been met. If it still says training, then that's indicating the opposite, that something about the mastery status really hasn't been um, satisfied, even if you think it hasn't. It's probably one of these conditions that we um, talked about. If the data collector decides, however, that they want to override what the system is suggesting, um, so the system is suggesting you run a maintenance trial because mastery has been satisfied, and they think it's still being baseline, you're certainly able to do that, but it has no effect on um, status. It's basically going to kind of look like a blip when you're looking at your data grid in terms of, oh, that's interesting, why do we do a teaching session um, sort of in the middle of um, maintenance? Really great question. And hopefully that was um, helpful to answer. Okay, we're looking at another question. Okay, another person asked a more administrative question about whether or not this webinar is going to be available for future use. Hopefully that means finding it helpful. Um, yes, we are going to record it. We're going to post it in the Learning Center. All of you who attended are going to get a follow-up email with a certificate of attendance, a link to it, so you can share it with anybody that you want to have watch it, um, have it for forever, uh, meditate on it, do whatever you'd like with it. It'll also live again within um, the Learning Center for future access. Um, so yes, we definitely want to have this widely available because we realize how much people want this um, relatively simple information. So definitely, this question will definitely be available in multiple locations, including a direct link sent um, to all of you. But here yeah, we're looking at some of these other questions that are rolling in. I'm going to mute myself for just a second, and then we'll come back um, as a group to, to bring up some of these great questions that are coming in. Okay, we have another question, a uh, great question that's coming in um, with regards to a learner meeting mastery criteria during baseline um, for a particular sublevel. Okay, so. I'll repeat that. So um, the question is, if a learner met mastery criteria during baseline for a particular sublevel, will that still be considered mastered and should it be maintained? The answer is yes, as long as the mastery criteria have been satisfied and you don't meet the criteria for reteaching, that's going to stay there. So that's perfectly pointing out the, um, our point about trial type not mattering in terms of meeting mastery status, um, as long as all those other parameters, so across people, sessions, um, you know, settings, all of those parameters are filled. We don't care again because the reason we don't is we want it to match real life. And if the student can master it during baseline, we don't want anybody spending time working on it. You should move on to something else. They obviously have that skill at strength. Um, and so we would code it as mastered um, and it'll stay mastered in case you want to continue working on it under maintenance conditions. Um, but yes, that's definitely that's a really great question and a really great example of that point about um, trial type not mattering in terms of status. Really nice question. Thank you. Um, 
All right, someone else asked a great question, um, whereby kind of going along that same idea as if something's mastered in baseline. So this is unrelated, so I'm not going to give too much detail because it's with regards to PTO, uh, but it's a great question. So if something's mastered during, uh, or excuse me, during baseline, like we just talked about in those several examples, should it count for PTO? And this is really up to you. Um, so yes, it's correct that now no teaching occurred. So if you want the PTO to really reflect conditions of teaching only, then you can manage the PTO worksheet and take that sub-level or context out. Um, if you want PTO to really reflect everything that has been sort of, you know, another way to look at it is things that have been tested and gone to mastery, um, and you don't care as much that teaching did or didn't occur, it's just that they have that skill of strength, then you could keep it in the PTO worksheet. Um, I think a, a really great resource for that would be to look at um, one of the um, Help Center articles is about managing the PTO, and there's some examples like that. And a lot of that is dependent on you and what you're using the PTO for um, in terms of whether or not you want to keep it on there or if you want to sort of take it out of the record because no teaching really occurred. Um, they had that at strength. Really great question, and I think it really just depends on sort of what your purposes are um, for monitoring that way. Good. We'll take a couple more questions um, at large because we have time, and then we'll um, sort of wrap up with some final thoughts. Okay, it looks like our questions that are relevant to the group at large are sort of slowing down. Hopefully that means we've answered everything, which is um, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up. We're still monitoring, so if you're just wait, you know, you're still formulating your questions, please feel free to continue to have them in. And if you ask something and I haven't talked about it out loud, someone's preparing an individualized answer for you, so no worries, you will be definitely um, responded to. And we welcome and appreciate all questions, even if you're worried it's a little, um, off the main task, we still want to hear from you, so please um, continue to submit your questions. Um, relatedly, I just want to remind everybody about our help desk and getting help. Um, and one of the best things I can encourage you to do is even if you sat through this and you're like, I should know better because you know we're we're looking at all the conditions under which mastery would and wouldn't be assigned, but I still I can't figure it out. Um, we want to hear from you, and and we know these telltale signs to look for really quickly. So. What I just encourage you to do is not sit on any kind of issue like that. If you think something should be mastered um, or some other status and it's not going the way you want um, and you kind of do your check, reach out to us. We can usually identify that really quickly. Probably all of you are aware of our wonderful help desk. 
Um, but I don't know if you're aware of all the options in which you can contact the help desk, which is what I have listed here on the right. Um, you can call us, you can email us, you can chat. Um, there's a lot of different ways. And so again, we highly encourage you just to not sit on anything like this because in many cases, it's a matter of, um, of your learner's instructional time, which there's nothing more valuable um, than that. And so we don't want things like this to sort of go unanswered. Also, um, hopefully all of you are familiar or are gaining familiarity with our Help Center. We have um, so many wonderful articles in there, and several are related specifically to mastery status. This includes this list here, mastery status, managing the objective, and there's one called the status is assigned incorrectly um, based on that common um, report to the help desk. So I really highly encourage everyone to sort of um, look at these. We'll send these along actually as compliments to the follow-up email. Um, and you might want to consider sharing them um, far and wide with everybody you know that's sort of um, asking these kinds of questions. It's gonna, you're going to recognize a lot of it, a lot of the scenarios and other information that we um, presented on today are directly pulled from these um, Help Center articles. They're really, really great. Um, so highly encourage you to, to check those out. And again, we'll send these as a compliment to um, the follow-up information that we send. I'm just going to double check with my um, colleagues if there's anything else that they want me to bring to the group. Um, so bear with me for one second, and then we'll... Um All right, I think we're good. We're going to stay on the line for a few more minutes. Again, just to answer the last question that um, we're answering individually, please feel free to stay with us and ask more questions. We're really appreciative of everyone's time, and I hope that you found it um, valuable. And feel free to give us feedback on that specifically. Um, and be looking forward to hearing about the next topic um, that we will be advertising soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, we'll talk soon. I'm going to leave the uh, meeting open for a little bit again, just so that um, people continue to ask questions if they feel like they want to. Thank you. All right, I'm just making my final call for questions. Um, we are going to go ahead and shut down. It's, it's going silent on the question bank, but before we do that, we just want to give a last call, make sure that everybody got their questions answered since we can see that um, several of you are still um, hanging out with us. So again, last call for questions. We'll wait a couple more minutes before we shut down.
Okay, I think we've addressed all the questions. Um, again, if for some reason we missed something that came in um, and you and you want it, please feel free to um, reach out to the help desk and you can say that you were in here and that your question didn't get um, answered. Um, and again, as a reminder, we are going to send out a follow-up email early next week with the recording from this and um, some follow-up notes. Thank you all so much. This was um, a really um, helpful experience for us and hopefully you felt the same way. Bye-bye.